So how come you've written all these aphorisms, Robert? I don't know. I mean, it's extraordinary how it began. I wrote a play in which there were four lines that friends said, those are good aphorisms. And I thought, well, why don't I just do them as standalone one-liners, hence the one-line sage on Twitter. And I did. And uh, the bug really bit me, and I've been doing them ever since. So what exactly is an aphorism? Well, one example might be, for instance, the absent-minded professor is not so much absent as present elsewhere. And you have uh, 4,000 followers on Twitter already. I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. They gained immediate traction, started in March, just in March, what, a few months ago? And um, my agent wants to include a lot of the, those that were favorited and retweeted in my book. Ah, so there's a book of aphorisms, Stu. There will be in a few months. And your uh, education, has that helped you with the aphorism? I think it has, actually, to be honest. I really do. Because I was very woolly, you know, starting off. And now um, I get a real thrill from putting a complicated thought into one line. I get a kind of eureka moment when every time I do it, hence the bug. A novelist, you see, has to sort of plough on page after page, whereas I get a eureka moment every line I write. Um, and what's been your career so far? Well, after uni, I went to uh, spell with the Foreign Office in academia, and I ended up in journalism. And I trained in the late 70s and did my, what launched my career in what was then Fleet Street, now Wapping, was a major interview I did with Mrs. Thatcher, who the, the following year became Prime Minister. And that was a big interview, and that really opened, began to open doors for me career-wise. Okay. As well as the book, you also mentioned a stage play. The stage play is called Commanding Voices, and it had a longer-than-average five-week run in London, in, up in Hampstead. And, in fact, come to think of it, it's, due for, it's a but due for revival. Ah, so we could be seeing it again. I hope so. In the West End? <laughs> well, it nearly made the West End first time round, but hopefully this time it might. Or maybe a number one national tour, yeah. and then possibly into the West yeah. End. We'll see. And have you always lived here in London? No. I was born in a small country village down in Kent. Uh... And uh, the, the culture shock for, that I would have experienced had I come straight from a small village to London would have been huge. But fortunately, it was mediated by four years in, in uni in a small market town called Cambridge. You may have heard of it. Um, yeah. The other extraordinary, you know, because I really put roots down when I came to London, and one mm -hmm. of our more radical townies on the Residents Association, was very sort of anti-country. Extraordinary, because I loved the country, having been brought up in it on farms to it as a kid. And we were going to plant trees in our streets, and he was dead against it. And we said, why? And he said, because they're so messy, all those leaves that fall every year. And I, between you and me, Robert, I don't think he's ever been out of London. <laughs> That sounds like the, the germs of another aphorism in there somewhere. <laughs> it could be. It could be. OK, well, thank you very much, Robert. That was, uh, that was fascinating. And uh, I really look forward to seeing the book and um, seeing the play. Well, that was it's my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.